What's going on everybody? In my previous video, I showed you guys how to set up a Twitch page using Touch Portal so you can switch between scenes, you can reconnect your Touch Portal application to OBS, you can start and stop your stream, and even create a clip on your live stream. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about logic statements. We're gonna go into more detail on logic statements. Really, the overall goal of this video is to explain the logic statements in Touch Portal so you understand how they function. We've already created buttons with logic statements in them. What I'm gonna do is explain those buttons to you guys so you understand the if, the else, the wait for timer logic statements. Once you understand the basic logic statements in the logic statements section, you will get a better understanding of how all of them function. So you really only need to learn how to do those first three logic statements, and then you can dive into the rest of the logic statements that you need in the Touch Portal actions. This video is part of a set of Touch Portal guides for beginners on my YouTube channel. If you wanna keep up to date on Touch Portal, Make sure you subscribe to this channel. With that being said, let's jump into this video. It's going to be a quick one, but it's going to be a very valuable one. If you followed along with my previous guides, this is what we have set up for Touch Portal currently. It's a reconnection button with OBS, a starting and stopping stream button, recording button, scene switches buttons down here, a play and add button, and create a clip button. The two buttons we're going to focus on in this video is the OBS reconnection button and the streaming state button. These two buttons use logic statements within Touch Portal that these other buttons use, so we don't need to cover all of these buttons. The first button we're going to look at is this OBS reconnection button. Within in this button, what you will notice is an action for OBS connect touch portal to OBS. You'll notice an action to change the button visuals from the default icon over to the icon with the green arrow on it. You'll also notice a wait for a certain amount of time action and then an action to change the button back to the defaulted icon. The action that we're going to be looking at is this action here, the wait for timer action. This is a logic statement in touch portal. This action is the wait for timer action. This action is allowing us to change the button from this yellow arrow icon over to the green arrow icon for 100 milliseconds before it switches back to the yellow arrowed icon. This just brings life to this button, making it very visually pleasing when you press it as it basically confirms in your mind that you've pressed the button. A wait for timer logic statement allows you to set the amount of time in between actions. And that time can be set based on milliseconds, seconds, and minutes. You can place a wait for timer in between any number of actions on any number of your buttons to create time or to create a pause in between certain actions. The next button we're gonna look at is the streaming state button. In the streaming state button, you'll notice the first statement on the streaming state is if OBS streaming state is stopped. That is an if state action under the logic statements on the action menu. The if state allows us to create an if statement of some sort based on the number of statements that we have on Touch Portal. This depends on how many plugins and stuff you have on your Touch Portal device, but it allows you to create if statements for actual actions or actual things that happen within applications. So for instance, if the OBS recording state is stopped or started, if the OBS scene change to is this scene or that scene, or if the OBS streaming state is stopped. Essentially what this if statement is telling Touch Portal is if the OBS streaming state is stopped or your OBS is not currently streaming, then we want to start the stream. And when we start the stream from OBS, we also want to change the icon over from the defaulted icon to the streaming on icon here. Directly below this action, we have what is called an else action. An else action fits inside of if state actions. The else action is essentially recreating the if statement within this else slot here. What it is saying here is if OBS streaming state is stopped, we want to start the stream or else or otherwise we want to stop the stream. 
This is how we create an on and off button within Touch Portal using if and else statements or if and else actions. And under the else action, what we have here is stop the streaming with OBS and we change that icon back to the defaulted icon. The next thing I wanna take a look at is the change button state action. The change button state action essentially tells Touch Portal whether or not a button is turned on or off. You can set these inside of if statements to make your life a whole lot easier later down the road when you create more complex buttons that need access to different buttons. For instance, if you want to create a button that is active based on the button state of a different button, setting the button state on or off makes that whole process a lot easier. So what we're going to do is create the logic statement of whether or not this button is on or off by placing the on and off button states in this if and else statement. You see this repeated over and over again in the logic section here on the left. You have custom states that you can build in Touch Portal. We won't be diving into that in this video. And then you also have a repeat uh, logic statement here that will repeat an action a certain number of times. The last thing I want to take a look at is the event statements here. The event statements allow us to do things like when a button state changes. This is a great way to create on and off switches for the icons for this button based on the button state of the button. We also have switches like when the custom state changes or when plugin state changes. When plugin state changes are actions based on other plugins on Touch Portal. Plugins are developed by third party developers that can be imported into Touch Portal, and you can create event statements based on changes in those plugins. That completes this tutorial, guys. I want to thank you again so much for watching this video. If you did learn something from this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel to keep up to date on all the awesome guides that I create. If you do have any questions after watching this video, feel free to hop in my Discord server or the Touch Portal Discord server for more information or to get any questions that you have answered. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you next time. Peace.